Folks, what you're going to see on this video today is just an eclectic collection of different things. I like it word eclectic. That's one of them 50 cent words, you know. If you was, if you was, you know, writing a speech for somebody, you could charge them 50 cents for writing in the word eclectic. Anyway, this is this video is just an eclectic collection of different thoughts and ideas and premises and and different little short clips and something just just for shits and giggles. Uh, I will tell you, I'm at 1,998 subscribers. We're almost 2,000. When we hit 2,000, we're going to give away another T-shirt. So that ought to be coming up this weekend. This is Friday. So uh, anyway, sit back. Uh, get you, Make sure you got your cup of coffee. And let's just uh, sit around. And maybe, maybe I can get you to laugh. Maybe I won't. But there's going to be something on this video for everybody. Some of it might be boring to some of you. Uh, uh, but anyhow, let's, let's just see what happens. Well, I'm getting ready to head back to the house. It's just, it was just nine minutes after seven in the morning. My daughter ain't even left for work yet. And uh, uh, I got just, I tried to get out here while it's cool. It's supposed to be 92 degrees out here today and I ain't got no desire to be out in that heat. Uh, coming in this morning, just after daylight, saw, the, saw a mama turkey and six babies. And uh, I tried to use this camera to film them but the battery was dead. So I grabbed my, my just regular camera and shot a few pictures of it, which you'll see here. Of course, it's not very good quality. They were too far away. I don't know if you can tell how cleaned out it is in there amongst those little little hedge bushes, hedge, little hedge bushes. If you look at the ground, it's pretty clean compared to, if you look on over here somewhere, see all the leaves. So I like to take and, and I throw my chicken feed out here in the woods or in the edge of my yard, whatever you want to call it, and uh, let them chickens get rid of this poison ivy and after they get rid of that poison ivy, I'll go in there and I'll trim out bushes and hedge and whatever. But uh, uh, these are Cornish rocks, and Cornish rocks are known for being pigs with feathers. And they will just eat nonstop. The hell, they'll fall asleep with their head in a food bowl as long as there's food in there. Anyway, the thing of it is, these, these chickens will grow so fast. They will grow faster than their legs can support them. And what happens then is, bless their heart, I mean, they're raised as a meat chicken. But bless their heart, they get so big, their legs break just from their own weight. So we're not, uh, what I do is I, I don't just give them feed in a pan and let them just eat till they can't eat no more. I throw it out here, I'll throw it out here in the grass or in the leaves and make them work for it, and that exercises a little egg.
Plus, it provides entertainment for me to watch. <laughs> Yeah, just throw it out there and let them have a big time. <laughs> That's what I do in the morning, sit and drink my coffee, feed my chickens. All right, we'll get back to something else. One of the advantages of having the chicken tractor, of course, is that you can move it as often as you wish. Now, me personally, I just move it in the mornings when I get here, and then it's all set up fresh water and fresh grass, you know, for uh, the rest of the day. But I just wanted to show you that you can see where, I don't want to say scars the ground, but it does mark it where the, uh, where the uh, chicken tractor's been. But then you look on out yonder, of course, you can't, you can barely tell if at all where it's been. So it takes a few days for it to heal back up. But I've got several hundred feet that run left and right here. And so I can run a, I can run a row, you figure, eight foot. That's how long my chicken tractor is. Eight foot goes into a hundred feet uh, 12 and a half times so that means every hundred feet it takes 12 and a half 13 days to cover a hundred feet well I probably got 300 feet here so you're talking about it taking close to a month for me to go one way from one end to the other and by that time it's all healed back up so I should be able to have a never-ending supply of grass for them to feed on as long as I move this thing every day. Like I said, that's the way a chicken tractor works. Let me, let me move it. Of course, you always see things you would change after you build something, after you've used it. If I were to build this again, I would make this right here a full length two before. I wouldn't cut it off. Because that'd give me a lot easier leverage. It would be real easy to work. Because sometimes my old back's tired. You chickens already eat all that grain? Well, you just saw me moving that chicken tractor. Let's see here. It's like taking three or four rakes in there to it. <laughs> Folks, I just come in from outside and I gotta tell you, it's hot out there. 
Uh, they're talking about a heat index today well over 100 degrees and here in Tennessee you get that daggum humidity combined with them high 90 temperatures. Ooh lord. It'll make you sweat more than Hillary Clinton at an NRA convention. Boy, I ain't never seen nothing like it. Man, here it is June 24th. Hurt near July, another week it's gonna be July 1st. And I've got the most beautiful tomato plants. Them suckers are over four foot tall now. Got the little cherry tomatoes and I got beefsteak tomatoes and I don't know, some other kind of red delicious tomatoes. And, but they're all green. And I think my zucchini plants are queer or gay. I really do. I think my zucchini plants are gay. And here's why. The guy down at the feeding seed store, he told this woman to go prance around in her garden at night naked and her tomatoes would blush and turn red. Hell, fire. I tried it last night and my damn zucchinis grew to 12 inches. All right. According to them damn Democrats, and if you're a damn Democrat, I'm sorry. Maybe someday you'll get educated. But uh, good God Almighty, people, I cannot get over the logic that some people use. I, I just can't get over it. And I'm sorry that I, I keep beating this damn dead horse. But as long as people still think that if you ban guns, you're going to ban problems, we ain't never going to get nowhere. So, uh, using that logic, let's ban forks and spoons. Because forks and spoons make people fat. And they get obese and they die. So let's ban forks and spoons. Oh no, there's no reason to ban forks and spoons. It's that person's choice. It's the person that chooses to abuse the fork and spoon. Okay. Well, let's, let's ban automobiles because people get drunk and get in an automobile and kill people. So, hey, let's take the automobiles away from all the law-abiding citizens out there that own an automobile and obey the laws of the road and don't get drunk and get out there and kill people. Let's take away their cars. Oh no, no, no. You can't do that. It's a person's behavior that caused the problem. They chose to drink and drive and that's why there was that accident to kill people. It's not the car's fault. It's not the alcohol's fault. It's the person. No shit. Well, the same damn thing applies to the guns. It's not the gun's fault. And I swear to God, you damn people are so fucking prejudiced. You don't uh, understand that in Connecticut and New York, they've actually banned the AR-15, AK-47 look like. You know? Well, why? It's because of how they look. They're black. Connecticut and New York don't like black. Don't like black guns. They're prejudiced. They don't like blacks. In Connecticut and New York, they don't like blacks. They're prejudiced against blacks. Well, the only damn difference and that damn gun and a hunting rifle out there is the fact that it's black. It's a semi-automatic weapon. It's not fully automatic. And it's not an assault rifle. It's not an assault rifle. I don't know why, well I do know why, because the media wants to work you up into a frenzy, you know, and talk about the assault rifle. It wasn't a damn assault rifle. It looked like one, but it wasn't one. In all these shootings and killings, there have been no assault rifles. None of them. None of them. Because your assault rifle is a semi-automatic, uh, not a semi-automatic, but a fully automatic, or it can fire a three-round burst. Bam, bam, bam. Squeeze the trigger and go. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Whereas the semi-automatic 
pull the trigger one time, it goes bang. Pull the trigger one time, it goes bang. But these fucking Democrats out here, these damn people who want to snatch these guns and want to ban certain types of guns, aren't putting the blame where the blame ought to be, and that's the behavior of the individual. They say we're gonna, we're gonna ban, we're gonna prevent you, honest, hardworking, peace-loving, law-abiding citizens. We're gonna let all of y'all. No longer be able to buy one of these because we're going to ban them. Hmm. How about this? Obama does not want us to judge Muslims by the actions of a few. Sound like a reasonable statement, right? Don't blame all Muslims because some of these Muslims carried out these crimes. You know, it's not every Muslim's fault. That's just like saying if one of them was a Southern Baptist, then you're going to blame all Southern Baptists, okay? But Obama says, don't blame all Muslims because of the actions of a few. Well, then don't blame all gun owners because of the actions of a few. Okay, we'll go to a different subject. Boy, howdy. I want to say thank you so much. One of, my, one of my subscribers sent me this. This is a copy of a K-Bar, a USMC K-Bar. It's a copy because it don't have USMC down here. But man, you talk about sharp. That son of a bitch is sharp. This was sent to me by Rodney. Rodney, I appreciate that so much, buddy. He says his daddy-in-law, who's passed away, rest, may he rest in peace, his daddy-in-law had two of them. And Rodney wanted me to have one of them. He said, maybe you can use it. He said, keep it, sell it, do whatever you want. I never sell a gift. Rodney, this will be with me the rest of my life. I'll never sell it. I just, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, Rodney knew I, I like knives and, and he says give me your address I want to send you something so Rodney I really do appreciate that buddy uh, this is a more than likely this is a Vietnam vets uh, era the Vietnam War era the Vietnam War era or whatever uh, because the PX BX whatever were selling these at the time back in the 60s, mid, early 70s, uh, and more than likely that's what this was, was a, a copy they sold in the PX back there. It's got a nice leather case come with it, but uh, I really do like it, and I want to say thank you, Rodney. And uh, Rodney also enjoyed my homemade wine, and he asked me what proof it was. I said, well, I don't know, it's just good. So he sent me a hydrometer. And those of you that know what a hydrometer is, or don't know, a hydrometer will tell you what proof your uh, uh, liquid is. You know, like is it 100 proof, which is 50% alcohol? Is it 10 proof? You know, a lot of wines are around 11, 12%. Uh, alcohol, which is about a 22 to 24 proof, 22 to 24 proof. So, uh, but the way you have to, the way you have to do it is you've got to float it before it makes, and then when it's all made, you float it again, and then you you find the difference in the two, and that tells you what proof that thing is. So, I'm really looking forward to using this. I. I don't know what proof my homemade wine is. I never have, I never have uh, had a hydrometer to check, it, but I do know that it's pretty good. Uh, I like a sweet wine, so when I'm drinking my homemade wine, I drink a hell a big old 16 ounce tumbler, you know, uh, with ice, and uh, 
I'm feeling it and, and enjoying it. By, by the time I get the bottom of that glass, I guarantee you that. <laughs> One old boy, he asked me, he says, how long can you store this wine? Uh, I usually store it in the refrigerator until it all gets drunk. Or, uh, well, that makes two of us see. The wine gets drunk, person gets drunk. <laughs> Uh, truth is, I don't know. Now, I went to one of them fancy wine making places where they sell stuff, and, and I bought some corks. And they they were they they sold me this chemical with some kind of powder, I believe that you put in it, and it stops the fermentation process to where it don't end up turning into vinegar. But I've never had the uh, wine lasts long enough to turn bad because after it's made to suit me yeah, you know, when them bubbles quit it's made and I pour me some off in a glass and it tastes good I set that jug right in the refrigerator and I you know we sample from that jug until it's all gone and I've never had a jug of wine go bad because I've, it's never lasted more than a few days <laughs> anyway uh, I, I just want to say thank you, Rodney. That's very nice of you. Folks, it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough interest in people wanting to buy a t-shirt. Uh, I was hoping that I could get some screen printed and uh, uh, be able to sell you some t-shirts at a bargain. Uh, come to find out, the getting the screen made is going to be $15. Uh, six dollars each for the shirts so if I had 15 people that wanted a shirt that was going to be seven dollars each and, I, and I've discovered that I can mail them first class uh, for between three and four dollars in a brown envelope so you got to pay for a darn envelope so let's just say five dollars shipping so we're looking at twelve dollars and then eBay or PayPal gets a damn chunk so we're looking at uh, me being able to sell you a t-shirt delivered to your home for I don't know, thirteen dollars, thirteen fifty, something like that. So let's just say let's just say uh, thirteen dollars and fifty cents will get you an I like doing a cheap t-shirt uh, screen printed. Uh, but I don't have enough people wanting one, so you know, I mean. They said they'll, they'll screen print one shirt. That's no big deal. I believe I've got ordered for five. We need ten more. And I said that the deadline was going to be the 25th. And this is the 24th. This is Friday. So by Saturday night, my the, the deadline will be up. So let, I'm going to go ahead, since I've got this video going, to remind folks, I'm going to go ahead and put that put that deadline off until midnight Sunday night okay so the deal is if you want to I like doing a cheap t-shirt and it looks like they're going to be thirteen dollars and fifty cents delivered to your home uh, PayPal me right here at call Bob for signs at yahoo.com PayPal me seven dollars all I'm asking for is a deposit to cover the cost of getting the shirts done after I've got the shirts done, then I'll let you know and you can send the other $6.50 to cover the, all the fees and the postage and everything, okay? So they'll be, let's say, $13 and a half. So that's going to be a lot cheaper than the ones that I've been making, which run around 20 bucks. Okay? Uh, decals, don't forget, I'm running the decals two for $3. And that's a giveaway price. I've been really giving away because when you send me three dollars, I only get like two dollars and sixty cents of it, and then I got to mail it in the envelope. And so there goes the sixty cents, and then you know we got like two bucks to cover the cover all the work and the material. So that's just a, a thing, basically a little thing I'm giving away, you know, to everybody just to try to get the name out. I mean, I am excited. Folks, we got a I like doing a cheap t-shirt in Oregon. Oh, Grizz, if he get off his rear end and send me a picture, I'd appreciate it. Well, we got a I like doing a cheap t-shirt in Oregon. And I got one in North Carolina. 
So we got the Atlantic and the Pacific. Brian Knowles got one down there in Arizona. So we got the Mexican border covered. And Idaho Hillbilly and Linda and uh, Miss Kitty and Idaho Hillbilly and Miss Linda uh, in Idaho. We got Canada bordered there. So how far? We got I Like Doing It Cheap t-shirts coast to coast and nation to nation, north and south. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. We got them in Louisiana and uh, Missouri and Kentucky and Iowa. Oh, man. I just I appreciate all of y'all so much. Uh, anyway, I'll shut the hell up and uh, let y'all get back to Iraq, Kelly. So the teacher says, Little Johnny, if there are four birds out on the telephone wire and your brother shoots one, how many are left? He said, Zero, teacher. The teacher says, Zero? How do you get zero? He says, Well, if he shoots one, it's going to scare the other three and they're going to fly away. She says, Well, the answer I was looking for was three but I like the way you think. Little Johnny said, well, teacher, I've got one for you. She says, okay, what? She says, three ladies go into an ice cream parlor and they all, and they come out each with an ice cream cone and one lady's licking her ice cream down around the bottom, round and round and round. Second lady, she's licking her ice cream from the bottom to the top. And a third lady, she's putting that whole ice cream in her mouth and licking on it like that. He said, which one is married? The teacher says, I guess the one that's putting the whole thing out of her mouth. He says, well, the answer I was looking for was the one wearing a wedding ring. But I like the way you think. <laughs> well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget you can order your decals and t-shirts from me. Y'all have a wonderful day. Oh, hush. Does anybody know how to fix that damn Windows 10? Your Yahoo account settings are, are not synced or something. I don't know. Anyway, folks, have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye.